Good morning, DennisSmithWirelessShops.com. Hey, quick message to all of you out there who are involved in the process of interviewing and hiring people for your company. I've become a big fan the last uh, year or so of Lou Adler and his performance-based interviewing process. And um, I thought I'd take two minutes this morning and give you a little bit of an idea about um, Lou's concepts behind performance-based interviewing. So I'm going to give you two minutes with Lou Adler. I'm actually driving to work this morning, and I'm listening to Lou Adler's basic one-question interview CD. And it's, it's focused on the one-question performance-based interview. So you'll, you might have to crank up your sound a little bit. It's going to be a little hard to hear, but Lou's going to give us three errors that are made in the interviewing process. And it's just a quick two-minute taste of what we should be doing. And as Lou says, you should stop doing dumb things and start doing smart things. And so I thought it'd be worth uh, your time this morning. So uh, here's Lou. Our three big ones you need to know about. Big error number one. There is a tendency to hire people who are competent but not motivated to do the work. When you hire on skills shown in the resume and presentation during the interview, you wind up with a team of people who can do the work but don't want to do it. These are the people who require more coaching, more supervision, and more training. So if you're spending more of your management time trying to get your below average performers to become average, you made the classic hiring mistake of hiring people who are competent, but not motivated. Big error number two, hiring people who are partially competent. Intuitive interviewers tend to like people who make good first impressions and if they have one or two other important traits, like being smart, or have strong communication skills, or have super technical abilities. The assumption is then made the person must be good at everything. Once on the job, they discover their mistakes as a person turns out to be weak at something very important, like working with others, achieving deadlines, or lack of a strong work ethic. If a few of the people you've hired have this mixed bag of great strengths coupled with some big voids, you've made the second classic hiring mistake of hiring people who are partially competent. Error three, not hiring the best person for the job. Sometimes the best people aren't the best interviewees. From what I've seen, this happens more than 50% of the time. The best people are those who are extremely competent to do the work, highly motivated to do the work, can motivate others to do the work, they work well with their coworkers, they consistently achieve results, they consistently exceed expectations, and they can be counted upon to get the job done regardless of the challenges without making excuses. First impressions can't measure this, and sometimes these great people appear quite average during the interview. One big benefit of the one-question performance-based interview is minimizing these types of errors. The key is to assess performance, not presentation, in the course of the interview. And as said before, this requires two big steps. One, not doing the dumb stuff, and two, start doing the smart stuff. Hey, thanks uh, to Lou for giving us three errors that we definitely want to avoid in the hiring process. If you want to check out more of what's going on um, with Lou and his performance-based interviewing, uh, check out AdlerConcepts.com. Pretty easy to find, AdlerConcepts.com. To change the way you hire, you're going to change your company big time. This is Dennis Smith, Wireless Shops.